Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This is another video in my Red Hat Certified Specialist in Containers exam practice sessions for EX188. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite anyone who hasn't subscribed to click the subscribe button. And if you enjoy the video, make sure you click like. One thing to remember is that these are my practice sessions for the exam where I'm going through whatever the objectives are and trying to explain them or do some examples of whatever the objective is um, asking you to do. They are not tutorials, nor are they intended to be training materials, but it's a chance for me to do some self-assessment to see if I feel like I'm ready for the exam, which is in just about two weeks. And if I'm not, then I have a little bit of time to brush up on stuff. Hopefully, if you are also preparing for this exam, the way I'm practicing these things might give you some ideas of what to do on your own for your own preparation. So we're continuing with the implement images using Podman set of objectives. And in this video, I'm going to look at the understand the differences and applicability of CMD or command versus entry point instructions and understand entry point instruction with parameters. So let's go to the command line and we're going to download the UB8 image. So Podman search. Or waiting on the search to get the fully qualified uh, image name. Do remember that the exam, best of my knowledge, is not necessarily tied to a particular version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, even though I'm practicing on a RHEL 8 VM. I think this actually is tied to RHEL 8, but if you see this in the future, know we're in early February, or not early, late February 2024, so if you find this years from now and you're studying for EX188, if it still exists, you know, your objectives probably going to be a little different than what I'm working with. So we're going to pull down this image and when that's done we're going to inspect it and see if we can find some information about entry point and command or waiting on that to download. The, the way I understand it and there's probably a better technical definition of it but for a container the entry point instruction is basically what this container is going to do. For example if you if I had you know, an HTTPD container, its entry point instruction is basically going to be run HTTPD. Or if it's a uh, some database container like uh, MySQL or MariaDB, its instruction is going to be to run the, the database engine. The command piece is primarily designed to feed parameters to entry point. And I'm going to do a couple of, of examples of that. But if you are with the absence of entry point, you can use command to run individual commands. Um, it is fairly easy to overwrite whatever you have in your image for command. When you uh, run your container, you can just tell it different um, commands to run, and that would overwrite what's on the image. Entry point, not so much. You would have to specifically say, you know, use a different entry point instruction. Uh, before I take the exam, I am going to do some reading between entry point and, and command to see if I can find some better reasons why you would use one or the other. But from what I have learned with some of my training so far, the idea of entry point is more of the permanent, this is what you want the container to always be doing, and command would be more optional kind of stuff. So let's look at Podman Inspect the UBI image. I guess I need to probably could have done Podman image inspect. That would have been just as well. I'm going to have all of that in there. JQ. All right. I like using the JQ command because it gives you some color. It makes that a little bit easier to see. And what I'm looking for under config is this. So the command that is um, that's configured for this image is bin bash. So if I were to just run a container with this, it's going to to run bin bash and exit. That's that that, that that's all it's it's going to do. So I could potentially feed that parameters. So if I wanted to, I could do podman run. We'll have it go away. Um, the image and so it's running bin bash and I am going to feed it the command ls dash l um, root and let's see what happens and so what it did it took the um, 
actually, I think what it did, it did not take that as a parameter, but instead what it did was replace bin bash with, I guess it's bin ls or maybe it's bin s bin ls, but it, it replaced it with ls-l slash. And we can kind of test this here. Let me do podman run. We're going to have it sleep for 10 minutes. We'll do dash d so it's in detached mode. We'll inspect inspiring wing. I know it's going to be the name of the um, container. Let's see what it's doing. So there's our state. It's currently running. Yeah, so it it replaced bin bash with sleep and the argument um, 600. So I was wrong. It's not doing bin bash and then feeding it parameters. It, it is totally re replacing it, which that that kind of that makes sense, or at least makes sense to me. So we'll do podman kill. So otherwise, I have to wait for it to to time out. So let us make an image. Let me get that. Um, image name. You can also do podman image ls as well. And as cmd, we're going to do ls-l root. Let's build our image. Call it cmd test. And we'll run a container off the cmd test image. And there we go. So that's, that's what I did there was make a container image that does what we did before, which will simply make a container from this image and replace the command that was there with ls-l. Now what I could do is run another container and we'll do who am I. And notice this time, just like um, before, it did not do ls-l, but instead it ran who am I an entry point is going to be a little bit different. So let's go to our container file and we're going to change this from command to entry point. We'll call this entry test and we'll run the container or we'll run a container as it. So we should get the same effect, ls-l, we see what our entry point is. But now what I'm going to do is feed this who am I, and notice that it still runs ls-l against root. I guess I could technically say that that is trying to, to pass it the parameter who am I. I'm just curious to see what happens if I do ls-l who am I. Probably nothing. Uh, yeah, it'll complain there's no directory. So I think it is is basically ignoring what I have put here. I'm not 100% sure on that. That'll be something I need to um, research between now and, and in a couple of weeks to make sure my, my understanding is correct. But we can use command to feed it parameters. So let's do, um, we have to change our syntax, I think for this. Well, this is syntax that I know that that will work. This is getting into some JSON stuff. So L, L, S, and then we're going to do dash L as an argument. And then command is going to be, we'll do temp. Podman build, we'll call it um, tree test two. We'll try to run a container with this to see if this does what I think it will. Yes, it did. So what happens, and let's, um, let's inspect the image. Mm, or it might have done what I wanted. We'll see. So entry test two, JQ. Probably could have just looked at config to see what I want. Hmm. All right, so I understand why that is just doing that um, temp. I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. Actually, I'll show it to you in the man pages as well. I understand why this is looking the way that it is. And I guess that makes sense for, yeah, because that was fed to ls-l and then the rest of this. Okay, so here's what I think happened. Go back to scroll up to here. Is ls-l was fed 
bin sh as its parameter, which is what makes sense here. And bin sh, I'm just curious to see what would happen if I did this on my system. So bin shc temp. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how the rest of that happened. But let's do this instead. Let me go back to my container file and then we'll go into the man page. I'm going to put this into the square bracket. I think this is going to behave the way that I want, but we'll see. Podman build dash T um, entry test three. Podman run RM entry test three. Okay, that's what I expected to see. And we'll inspect entry test three. We'll just look at the config portion. Okay, yeah, that's what I expected. So the entry point ls-l and it's being fed the parameter tmp. And so the, the idea here is let's say that you have a container that um, well, let's say you have a container that is feeding ls-l and you want to potentially have it um, spit out the output for different directories. This is how you would achieve that. Your entry point is ls-l and the command is feeding it the parameter. So podman run rm entry test three. This time I'm going to feed it the home parameter. Oh, I expected something to be that. Nope, because all we have is a root. That makes sense. Let me feed it the root parameter. And we see what was in, um, in root for that. So what I'm doing is replacing the parameter that's being fed by CMD to entry point. Let's take a look at the man page for container file. And let me look up entry point. And this will make a little bit more sense. So there's two forms of the entry point. If we use this form here, executable param one, param two, then it does exactly as, as we say, and in, in, in the previous container file, I had the executable LS and the first parameter comma separated. And then in, um, in quotation marks was dash L. If we don't have this and we just had LS dash L, what it's doing is actually running bin SH dash C and it's being fed the, um, the parameters and the parameter that is being fed is whatever command you're wanting to run and then whatever parameters are for that command. The syntax for CMD is a little bit different. Let me go back to the top of the man page and let's look up CMD. It can do three things. It can either feed default arguments to entry point, which is what we were doing in the last time I had the um, TMP directory it can do the same executable form as entry point, or it can do the calling um, bin sh and feeding it parameters for dash c. The, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 this, uh, I remember when I'm looking at the, the man page, the, not sure if you have multiple entry points. I don't think you can. I might experiment with that, but that might make the, the video a bit long. I do encourage you with your own um, practice to do some experimentation. This, this is kind of a good way to learn. You can see what different errors will, will occur with that. And it would kind of make sense you would have the one CMD because it is usually going to be feeding the parameters to entry point. I did want to make an example of actually changing the entry point. So let's go back to our container file and I'm going to totally get rid of the command line, which actually I kept our images. Let me look at images we have. Let me inspect entry tests. I think entry test two does not have the CMD instruction. So nope, it did. Let's take a look at, oh, I think it was entry test. Yeah, because entry test um, two had that weird behavior. Well, no, I need to make my own another um, image. We'll do it with this. We'll call it entry test four. I'll inspect entry test four. Okay, that's what I expect. So LSL. And if I were to just run a container from entry test four, then... It'll give us ls-l. 
Now I could clear my screen here. Could specify entry point. We're going to do this uh, a couple of ways. I'm just going to do who am I for entry test four. And notice that returns root. Now doing it in this way is effectively doing the, um, the syntax that is the bin sh dash c who am I. If I wanted to do something with parameters, let's actually, let's try this. I'm curious to see what happens if I were to try to do ls dash l. Well, it was expecting, um, well, I guess the dash L option, I'm not sure what that does off the top of my head, was expecting a uh, argument and it didn't get one. So let's try putting this in quotes. And that's going to complain because there is no command named ls space dash L. So if I wanted to do that, I would have to use this syntax. And this is also in the, the man page as well. Equals, and this should look familiar to you do the TMP directory. And there we go. We have changed the entry point to that. So, I mean, you, you can alter the, the, the entry point if you, if you want, I'm not sure a practical use for that necessarily, because I would just, you know, build another container image with the entry point that you want, but it is, it is possible to do. So let me take a look at the objectives again, real quick there's any verbiage that sparks an idea for things to discuss or practice. No, we talked about entry point command. That's something I need to research some more when we deal with parameters. I did, even though this video is probably running a little long, I did want to see what happens if you did multiple entry points or if it'll just complain. So that's an entry point. We'll do another one entry point. And this will just do the, um, Ben SH version of who am I? So let's build this T entry test. I guess we're up to five now, right? Need to tell it to build. I can't just read my mind. And let's inspect this. I'm curious to see what, what we're going to see, what, what this is going to look like. I'm not going to limit it to just config because I wonder if it's, there'll be other things. Okay. So it looks like it took the last of the entry points and that's what it said it would do with, um, CMD as well. And that kind of makes sense because really containers are, are supposed to just be doing one thing. So it wouldn't make sense to have multiple um, entry points, but I am curious to see if it'll run uh, entry test five. Yep. And it ran and it did the, the, the second of the instructions. So I think for um, the CMD and the entry point um, directives, I have a fairly good handle on that. Again, I'm going to, um, do a little bit of research to see if I can find some more specific reasons why you would use one over the other. I think of it as the entry point is what you're wanting your container to do. And then you can feed it optional, optional parameters with CMD. So if you found this useful, make sure you do click like on the video. Also, thank you to returning subscribers for watching another video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell. So you'll know when new videos come out. And as always, thank you for your time. I'll see you the next time.